All right, what is up, everybody? It's Lids, and we are back for some more Pyre Community Right Night, featuring first and foremost the members of the Right Club Discord server. If you are unfamiliar with said group, well, 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 you can join said group right there. However, however, those of you in chat, you are not off the hook because you'll be taking requests from members of chat. You can see that red circle with the white L below chat. You click on that, you'll see the various request options that you have, including everything ranging from choosing specific exiles, masteries, talismans, songs, arenas, even titan stars is all fair game. So, without further ado, let's hop into versus mode here, and let me hop into said Discord group, and we will get the show on the road. Okay. Great. So, so, let's see. I am now primed and ready to go. Is there anyone, anyone hanging out in chat, who would like to get us started today? In the meantime, why don't I set us back up for our defaults here? Well, that's okay. Don't all volunteer right at once here. Admittedly, uh, I think our volume was off as I was uh, putting on the starting soon screen, and so may have given people a uh, may have thrown people off. May not have realized that we were about to start on up here. But anyways, let's see. Let me, at the very least, get Steam Friends booted up here because I think we're probably going to need to do that anyway. And it is uh, not booted up at the moment. There we go. Okay, but I suppose at the very, I mean, if there is no one here is immediately available. I could just top in myself and just throw in uh, a CPU here of, of some variety and uh, leave it at that while we're waiting for other people to hop in here. Seems as though perhaps people need a minute. Our rotor's ready to go. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Why don't we get I rotor in in that case? Okay. He invites sent. Let's put on an actual player two in that case. Fox Voco, what's up? It's been a while. How you been? And an orc can join as well? Alright, well in that case, in that case, we are getting things started in style. The classic High Rotor and Anor Showdown. Always good for at least a few tense, perhaps sudden death rites. No worries, Anor. Just finished doing some uh, some WoW raids. Nice. How'd they go? Why don't I start setting you guys up then? I'm assuming we're going to end up getting I Rotor on player one here, in all likelihood. Let me put him there. And let me put Anor in player two, not to mention we already have player two all set up for the Nightlings, which presumably is what Anor is going to go with. There we go. Let's actually switch you in game as well. Over to the Withdrawn, I'm assuming. Withdrawn, I wrote her for you. And uh, Nightwings for you and Or. Is that right? Yeah, still Nightwings for Or. Yes. Withdrawn for I wrote her. Fantastic. All right. In that case, we should have our people in here ready to go. Let us know if there's anything you'd like to see for this first, right? Otherwise, we'll just uh, let them pick whatever they want to pick. Yeah, let's double check your controls. Just make sure those are looking all good. Great. Okay, Box Focus, choose an arena. One boat, please. Okay. So it's gonna be one of those nights, huh? Starting things off 
in style at the Hulk of Ores. Anything else we'd like for the first one? A Pog matchup indeed. That's right, Amanda. Exactly my thoughts. I was thinking, you know, I'm not sure if we're ready for this at the very beginning. I'm not sure if we're ready for this. But it looks like that's going to be it from a request standpoint for this first one. So why don't we get this started here? Good evening, exiles. You heed the summons to the Hulk of Ores. You have this opportunity to prove your worth. Try not to let the pressure get to you. The withdrawn stand ready. Night wings stand ready. Who shall conduct the rites? All right, so no requests here when it comes to exiles, masteries, or talismans. So you're free to take whatever team you'd like. Now these two. You have some similarities in the teams that they like to take. These are our two resident SAP experts. So you may see a Palmus on our rotor side, we may see a Volfred on Nora's side. Then again, of course, we're on the boat, so uh, that could change things. See if either player chooses to switch up their team specifically because of them being on the boat. And I do tend to find that the demons, perhaps more so than any other class, benefit most from being on the boat. Of course, Iroder is a big fan of using the demons. His Bleth, oftentimes, his leading scorer. Demon. You had me at sap experts. I mean, there was a time when such a, a statement seemed like an oxymoron. But you're seeing it here. The masters of the nutrition stick. They found a way to make it work. In Iroder's face, it's maximizing the rekindling. Oh, but although Lenore is not going to go with Volfred here. Instead, opting to go with a shoulder-smashing headwind, it seems. With Typhoon Bottle. Headwind. So perhaps a little bit of a deviation from Lenore's usual team setup, but here we go. Both players choosing to use their imps to explode on the opposing team. So it's Jody who has it here for Anor, and that is a quick score, and a 30-point score at that. Tizo, he goes down here. Oh, is that a bottled void? Did Nor sneak one past us there with a bottled void? That's Hedwin plunging for 20. Looks like someone was getting vacuum cleanered in. Yup, I think so. Oh man, Anor, look at this, off to a lightning fast start. She goes in, sends Tizo to explode, and then Jody goes through the portal, bringing him back, and in doing so, triggers Bottle Void, sucking in all of Iroder's nearby characters and banishing them in the process, allowing Jody to more easily get in for the score, although here's Iroder countering the 25 damage plunge with that Nutrition Sick Palmas. So, back at it here. It gets rid of this Pelef. It also gets rid of Jody, though. Jody comes back quickly. Here she is. But she's blocked. So, not this time for Anor. Now it's Iroder. This Pelef blocks. Void's banishment here. Still has the orb. This Pelef versus Jody. Jody lands up with it. And still has gear, but she goes down. Now this left. Bring around Rosie with Hedwin, who does have shoulder smash. Perhaps I wrote her. Trying to be cautious around him for that reason. There is that bottled void once more taking effect. 
Jody knocking back the defender and into the pyre she goes for 30 damage here. Now remember, I wrote her went all out on the rekindling. So although one more Jody plunge could be the last of I wrote first life bar, he has a large second life bar as well. That's everyone down on Anora's side, but she did take the Typhoon Bottle. So that will prevent I wrote her from sprinting, jumping, or using any of those special abilities when everyone is banished like that. And because Jody plunged and did not have prayer beads, this might be a situation in which Anora finds herself with some regularity here. She's not careful. Might not have anyone back to defend. Here's I wrote her. Infinite Stamina of Vizpalet is a dangerous sight. And she makes it in for 30. So same story here, this time for I wrote her. After Vizpalet plunges. Now he's permanently down one character for this series. Jody, thinking about going through that portal, does so. Try to be cautious, not immediately get banished by Palmas there. But she does go down. Izo brings her back. Free orb, takes it back, gives it to Jody, who this time throws it in and triggers this rekindling. So now we see that second light bar for I wrote her, which is 50. And that is a quick throw here from Tizo, shipping away five damage. And that means we are tied at 45 apiece. Just as oof, as only the voice could put it. Oh, look at that big play there from Jody. 30 point throw. That's key because now that means one more score, a full damage score from anyone on an Aura's team could finish the job, although now the same can be said for I wrote her. And what did I say at the beginning here? I don't know if we're ready for this. Right off the bat, we get ourselves into a sudden death right between Anora and I wrote her. Imp versus Imp. Here's Palmas. Edwin, camp in the pyre. He's his job to pursue. And does take Palmas out in time. Jody goes down though, but no one left to defend here. Pyre Rotor now has one Imp back. Here comes Jody though. Oh, but she's banished on the pirate doorstep. Oh no. She does survive. That's the defender who goes down here. No one back to stop her. And she takes the win. The night wings prevail. GG. Oh man. Starting things off in style. For those of you tuning in just now, well, that was a pretty sweet right to begin things for the night. The wrong composition against Battle Pride. I did not even catch that she had uh, taken it. Snuck that one past me. Until the next right. I know how to play against it, but you usually want different stuff. Oh, nice, Arumi. How was your camping trip? That sounds like fun. All right, and that let us know if there's anything else we'd like for the next one here. In the meantime, if not, I'll just reset us to our defaults. Oh, it rained a lot. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Not seeing any requests here. Give chat just another minute in case they do have anything that they're scheming up here. Otherwise, we'll get right back in on the action. Oh, Nora needs a minute. Okay, no worries. Yeah, so chat, if you have anything in mind, let us know. And as we just saw, just about anything between these two certainly has the chance to be a, a close match. Oh, did I forget? Oh, I, I did forget to change the updates, didn't I? Or the, uh, the request. They're, they're set for Mass Effect, aren't they? Aren't they? Hold on. Give me just a second here. Fortunately, that is a quick fix. But uh, you are correct. I am fairly certain that I did not update those. Pyre. Okay, let's see. Let's get rid of the Mass Effect ones. Let's add the Pyre ones. Oh, 
Okay, there we go. If you refresh Twitch, you should now see them all. There should be no more Mass Effect requests. There should now be only Pyre requests. Fortunately, there actually is some overlap between the description for the requests for Mass Effect and Pyre. So uh, somehow Box Boko found a way to still request the arena. <laughs> that That is something that exists for both of them. It worked out well in that sense. But yeah, now if you refresh Twitch, you should find that uh, the correct requests are up. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> All right, well, Anora's back, and we do have a request here from Amanda for specific talismans, and well, you know what it's got to be, right? No worries, Anor. We're going with leeching talismans. Leeching talismans. So, uh, so Amanda, there are two leeching talismans. Does that mean they need to take the two leeching talismans and they can take whatever for their third, or what are you thinking? What do they do for that third one? Do they not even take a third talisman? Minimum of one leeching talisman. Okay, gotcha. Perfect. Let's get going then. Nothing too extreme just yet. Okay, we're still warming up a bit. Oh, I hear the water. It is the boat. I'm pretty sure I reset it. I definitely did. This is a random boat. <laughs> oh man. Okay, it is, it does seem going to be one of those days. So let's see. Of course, if you're feeling ambitious, as it seems that Iroder is feeling, then you can go with a Brazen Manor Demon, add the 50% Leeching Talisman, and in theory, that is the highest net amount of points that you can score, and Leech, from one score. 40 damage and 20 leech for on net a 60 point swing, assuming that you have higher life that you can leech back. So both players are going for it here. So that means that no lead is safe. As if they do manage to plunge, they brazen manner Ignarius, then, uh, well, they're getting a lot of pyre life back and their opponent is losing a lot of pyre life. Which may single-handedly be enough for them to retake the lead. Boat equals code. Tezo. All right, and then for the last one here, going to be a speedy Zoxiana, it seems. Yeah, I'd go with that harp salute, which can switch places with the nearest teammate, which is a nice way to get what would otherwise be a relatively difficult to maneuver demon closer to the pyre, because again, those demons with Brazen Manor and all that leech, they are extremely powerful, but it is easier said than done to actually score with them. So our rotor goes with the teleportation harp, whereas Anor goes back to Nutrition Stick Volfred, character that we saw her choose not to use last time, somewhat surprisingly. But this time, she breaks him out. Right, here he is, that big Ignarius. Not quite as threatening here, because there is no higher life to be leeched in this case. It's just plain and simple 30 damage. But there is Tizo, plunging for 25 and leeching for 10. And there you have it. With that, Anora has retaken the lead, and we are, I think, going to see a lot of lead changes here. That is the nature of having leeching talismans. So I think we only saw Iroder take one of them. It is with Ignarius, though. And so there's 30 damage, and there is 15 leech back to Iroder's fire. So now Iroder retakes the lead, but then here's Anor, plunging for 25 and leeching 10. And at this point, where does that leave us? Anor, five behind, not quite enough to catch up on this occasion. Ignarius, knocked back and banished. Ignarius blocked here, now banished. That's a dangerous portal for Iroder and nearly goes through it and takes the orb and scores with it. This time going with Soxiana though. She's blocked, now banished. And that sapling is now on top of Iroder's portal. 
So it's Nor with a chance now to go on the attack. I wrote her with the preemptive Brazen Manor. Because Ignarius is powered up right now. Thinking about... Okay, no, he resets the Brazen Manor. Then resets the Portal Positioning. Nor resets the Sapling Positioning. I wrote her resets the Brazen Manor. Was thinking about using that Harp Loop probably to try to set up Ignarius, although does get the Imp instead. That may not have been the plan. Boy, there is the Bow of Magic kicking in. Looks like Ignarius was set to go all the way into the Pyre had he not been blocked. Looks like he was ready to take flight. There is Ignarius, and he does make it in here. But no Brazen Manor this time, so just 30 damage and 15 leash. Ignarius for Anor. A bit of a face-off arrow, and look at this. Opportunity for Anor. Deal 30 damage, and Leech 15. And like we were saying before, no lead is safe here. So that makes things practically level between these two. Here is Brazen Manor. Oh, but Anor says, no thank you. Not in my house. Um, Tizo seemingly just took flight, but uh, not in the usual imp way. He goes down. Tenor also down with Ignarius because he did not have pair of beats and he plunged. So she only has Volfred here. Trying to fend off this Brazen Manor Iggy. He scores. This will be huge. And yes, there it is. 40 damage. 20 leech. Bringing Irota back to 70 Pyre Life. And Anor down to 5. Now Anor, I do believe, has some rekindling with Volfred. But generally, Nor goes for just 10 rekindling rather than the full 50. Oh, and I wrote her going for the harp push, but it wasn't enough to make it in. That means I wrote her defenseless, at least for a moment here. Now getting Tiso back, though. Nor setting up the Brazen Manor. Doesn't quite have enough time to do so, though. Here's Oxiana. Waits to get her stamina back. Now makes move, but she goes down. Tiso. He's charged up with Brazen Manor, but he goes down. Actually, Anor defenseless here. Wolfred will be the first one back. Here he is. Fends off the initial attack, but there is the Harp Push. Successful this time. Triggering that rekindling, but again, just 10 Pyre Life. Meaning that just about any score would be enough for Irotor here. So Anor, in need of some leash. As Ignarius. Knocks back the Defender. Makes it in with Brazen Manor. Oh no, I thought it was active. It looked like it just expired. It's just 30 damage there. And 15 leech. And that is key. Because that means it was not enough for her to survive that plunge. GG. Their adversaries confidently thwarted. Thus end this night's proceedings. Well played. Big Narius. <laughs> I'm not sure if we've heard that one before. I don't think I have. But it is, uh, it's relevant. It's applicable. Well, chat, let us know if there's anything you want to see for this next one. And what do you say, Amanda? How was that from a leeching talisman standpoint? We got a lot of lead changes. Or at least some... Um, Dramatic comebacks or near comebacks. And at least one or two. Brazen Manor Ignarius lunges for 40 damage while leeching 20. chat let us know if there's anything else you'd like to see for this next one not seeing anything at the moment in which case of course we'll just hop on in and have these two take whatever they want to take grand ceremony okay so 
that's one for the quota. Mark that one down. Then Glade of Lou. Okay. Anything else, or will that be all? Looks like that'll be it. So why don't we get started here? The withdrawn shall confront the night winds. Welcome. Who shall conduct the rites? So I wrote her starting with a Titan Tooth Tamitha. Say that one three times fast. Now here's a nutrition sick full friend. Big power casting goals bracer Lendl. And a Thorn Knot Gilman. Not something we tend to see in Ortake here. And it looks like I wrote her. It's going with some aggressive harp plays here. Going with a speedy Zoxiana. That being his second harp. And lastly, on the north side, all left side, Bertrude there, with the legendary talisman to cast through barriers, means also Stubborn Flame. So if Anora is behind, Iroda will deal 10 less damage than he score. There is the Titan Tooth. I mean, Iroda a little bit of extra time here, and does make it in with Tamitha. No prayer beads means she's out for this series. So I wrote her at best at two characters, and there is the Nutrition Sick Volfred. Doesn't have to cover much ground before he gets within plunging range with this small arena. Making him particularly dangerous, but here's Tamta again. And Volfred off to the races here. Gets rid of it. Her true. She nearly makes it in, but she gets... Vanished, and now here is Soxiana once more. She's blocked. Gilman down here. Bullfred, not quick enough to come back. And that is Stubborn Flame kicking in here. So again, 10 less damage for Iroder with that score. That will continue to be the case, as long as Iroder is in the lead. But it's Tamitha down here. Bullfred places the sapling, and that gets rid of the last of the defenders. Opportunity here for Anor. This throw is unblockable, and does make it in for 30 damage. And that means Anor has taken a slight lead here. But it does, of course, mean that now with this plunge, there is no Stubborn Flame active. So our rotor is back to dealing full damage. Though so if he scores with this one, Stubborn Flame will be active. Now that he has retaken the lead. Lendl's out for this series. Here comes Volfred. He gets pushed. Now banished. Zoxiana off to the races. She's blocked. Flies over the defender. And around for fire. Can't quite seem to make it in. This time she does. And that is Stubborn Flame once more. And it is definitely starting to add up. For Fruit, now Volfred. Volfred's throw. Oh, can't get it off in time. Tamitha. Knocked back, but still has the orb here. Oh, but there is that ability to cast through the barriers. Helping out an ore there for sure. Going for it again. Wolfred. To Bertrude. Bertrude leaping in this time for 30 damage. 
And that means Anor is back in the lead here, which again means that Southern Flame is no longer active. Full front down. That leaves just Gilman for Anor. Ortrude out for the remainder of this series after plunging. Gilman trying to bide some time perhaps to get Fulford back. Here he is. He starts moving in and goes for a quick throw here. And that is enough to deal eight damage, which means a quick throw may be enough to do the trick, but probably does not fundamentally change much when it comes to Anor's strategy here. Fulfred makes a move, but now goes down. It's Bertrand who has it, though. But of course, with the throw, it means that Anor does not have anyone permanently banished for this series. Oh, Gilman with the Stubborn Flame. Give some time here for Volfred to go in for the winning throw. GG. Close match. Well done. Well played, you two. The right is complete. <laughs> Well executed stunning claim. Until the stars align. Anor, are you saying that that is your dedicated Titan Tooth counter? That has nothing to do with Titan Tooth. Titan Tooth is not any worse against this composition than against anything else. Snake Jump prevented the stun, she says. No, it prevents the stun against the worm stun, but it doesn't change anything against Tide Tooth because it, we are at the point where you're blocking um, the half plant, uh, the chrome plant with your half. Like, at that point, you're already at a severe disadvantage anyway. I'll admit you lost me. Could be, but it doesn't matter particularly. Like the crone, like that the crone is immune to Titan Tooth if it is, is not a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. It's just a uh, stubborn flame that makes it much harder to score. Right. Yeah, stubborn flame, so strong. She can pass. Even when Bertrude is, uh, should be Titan Tooth, she can still pass it. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, well, chat, let us know if there's anything you want to see in the next one. In the meantime, I'll just reset us to our default. Yeah, maybe just double check it do some additional testing and see if that does in fact work, in which case, I mean, that would be interesting, because, I mean, Titan Tooth has become one of the most common talismans for people to take. So if there is a workaround, a way to still be able to pass the orb when you're stunned like that, then I would think that could become a very useful trick. but see no additional requests here. So why don't we get this one started in that case? The withdrawn versus... Uh, I did reset the arena. <laughs> this is uh, twice in a row. The game has decided that after resetting the arena, it's gonna repeat where we went. It's a long list of little tricks like that. Some may call them bugs, I suppose. I mean, here is Hyrodor going with a Titan Tooth Pamitha. We could repeat history here and see if it does work, as Anor thinks it may. Uh, 
and then no work done with a bright wisp stowaway. Speedy Dispolet. Demon. And an ore once again with the Thorn Dock Gilman. Roder sticking with the double harp here, but this time going to all left side. Prayer beads, so can plunge with uh, Zoxian on the bear. And did take the harp salute, which of course means can switch places with likely Vizpalef would be the target for that. Make it easier for her to score. Another stunning claim worm here. It's Lady River. Additional damage on the talisman, but reduced hope. Still away, teleporting to the orb. She goes down, but she has the bright wisp, which means that when she does get banished from the orb, she will automatically pass it to a teammate. Here's Visible F. Time to throw it. For 22 here, cutting it a little bit short. There is stunning claim. Ignore a little bit of time. Try to get the stowaway back, although not enough time for it to actually come back from banishment. Stowaway teleports the orb once more. And she hops in for 20 damage. Soxiana to Panatha, back to Soxiana. Double harp attack, hard to stop. Amitha sneaks around the defenders and into the pyre for another 20 damage plunge here. So she was not the prayer beat Sarp, so she's out for this series. It's a stowaway over to Gilman. Back to the stowaway. Gets a quick throw off here for 11 damage. Might have had the option of plunge, but Nord decides rather keep everyone for this series. There was the Titan Tooth Sun, I believe. Stowaway down. Is Paleth down, though, and that'll bring back the stowaway, but she gets banished from Pamitha here. Here is Stunning Claim, and or perhaps trying to get other people back. Pamitha does make it in. Winning plunge. Uh, does Stan force me to release the thrower? I didn't have any trials. Like, it just happened automatically. The right is ended. All right, let's head on back. Until the stars align. And chat. We can also check the replay at some point, and like with the Titan to have stuff. That's true. We could verify. Looking at the replay. No, 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 I don't mean, uh, like, I know where the stuns came from, but the ones where I threw with Vespalath, uh, and got stunned, it automatically released a throw, that's what I mean. I didn't have, I didn't release it, it just happened. Hmm. Interesting.
Well, chat, let us know if there's anything you want to see for this next one. Okay, Norris made a request here. It's for Exile, so just as a reminder, Nor, remember, can't do something that inherently favors you over your opponent. But random Exiles, that certainly works. Okay, let's break out the bot then. In that case, one moment please. We will use the bot to randomly select people's Exiles. Usually the way we do it is that the order in which they show up here is the order in which you are supposed to take them. So that means Averter will have Manly first, then Lendl, then Ignarius. Okay? That'll be Iroder's setup. Then Anor selecting here. We'll get Almer first. And of course, if you get a repeat, then you can just go again. Then Zoxiana. Then the Stowaway. Interesting. <laughs> so they both get uh, Saps here. Anor gets double Savage. Okay, okay, interesting, very interesting. This will be intriguing. All right, anything else on top of that? We have the exiles. Will that be all? I mean, two savages is, it's a very offensive team. It's a very good offensive team. You know, defensively, it's going to be tough, but possible. Whereas I wrote her perhaps with a more defensively oriented team. Looks like that'll be all. So let's start then. I hear the imps. The so we're at the Isle of Kalimer. So it was Manly nights. first. Fry Rotor. As we were saying before, I Rotor and Nor both comfortable with the saps. I Rotor usually goes all rekindling, does so here as well. And Anor. From a very savage oriented team. So, what does she choose to go for here? Goes with the Bright Wisp. And it's all more again. Fairly defensively oriented team in our Rotor's case. So, I think the question will be for our Rotor. How do you stop Anor from scoring? Or rather, how do you score? Whereas in uh, Anor's case, it'll be, how do you stop I Rotor? Because you don't have much in the way of defense. Soxiana. Also, typically more of an offensive character, although perhaps on this occasion, Exile. the person that Anor will need to be relying on for defense takes the web lanthorn on her. And Ignarius, probably the best offensive character, depending on how I remember builds him here and is going for the full Ignarius. leech, Brazen Manor included. Now the stowaway. And she'll be your standard quick throw and savage. Alright, so here we go. An immovable object in the case of Irotor versus an unstoppable force in the case of Anor. 
Which one wins out? We'll just have to see. Spam first, and he does have the Nutrition Stick. It gives him the mobility to make it into the Pyre here. It does mean he's out for the series. So away. Pass one defender. Has the quick throw, but it's intercepted. Ignarius. Remember, has the big leech. He goes down here. An ore with Almer. He goes down. Automatically passes with Bright Wisp. So away. Hops in and has that quick throw. Almer and uh, Manly dueling it out here, and Almer wins out this time. Gets knocked back by Ignarius here, who is out for blood. Vanishes all of the Norse characters here, and oh, that even means may have time to get a Brazen Mana off. Has to cut the throw a little bit short here. Could have gone all the way up to 40. Sells for 32, and with Leech as well. That is a huge play there for Iroder. Zoe, intercepted. Ignarius, can he repeat what he did last time? He can. No Brazen Manor this time, so just the base 30 damage, but that's still a lot. And still means only 13 Pyre Life left for Anor, and although we often do see her use a Sap for some rekindling, no Sap this time. That means this is her one and only life bar. Manly powered up the throw, gets hard pushed away, but he's still in an offensive position here. But it's away with the counter, and she throws it for 15. And we saw that pyre back up to 100 pyre life for Iroder because of all that leech from Ignarius. So Nor with a lot of work left to do here, but keeps chipping away with it. Manly plunges for the win. Such a well-conducted <laughs> victory it was. GG. The right is done. So random exiles. There you have. Until the next right. So chat, let us know if there's anything you want to see for the next one. I won't give up so easily. Huh? Didn't go down without a fight? Oh man. Right back at it. More random exiles, says an Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. GG. In case I didn't come through. So Nor says more random exiles, so we will see this time who they end up getting. And again, we will go in order of who shows up first here. It looks like Iroder will pick first. Oh, no. Here we go. It's Barker first. Okay, definitely strong in that opening spot. Messenger in. And then Lady River. Okay, so her, oh, him, really, or, really good composition. That is a really good composition for Iroder. Then it's Gilman, Gareth, and Hedwin, not bad for Anor. All right, interesting. So again, it'll be in that order. So it's Barker, Messenger Imp, Lady River for Iroder, Gilman, Gareth, Hedwin for Anor. Come on, Discord. <laughs> Go over there. <laughs> Thank you. All right, anything else, or will that be it? We have our Exiles set here.
not seen anything else, so why don't we just go with that exile matchup here? And we're at the book. Small arena. And one that is particularly good for those quick exiles. For example, like Farker. Definitely, I wrote her happy to have him in the first spot here, I would think. And with prayer beads on him. And I believe it was Gilman in the first spot. For Noor. Also, certainly a speedy character. Going with the stunning flame once more with him. And the thorn knot as well. Seems to be Anora's preferred setup for her worms. And it's Messenger Imp. The web Land Thorn. As I wrote her was saying, this is a very strong composition here. Great offensive character with Barker. Great defensive character with Messenger in. Then Gareth. Savage. Furnor. Looks like she's focusing more on the plunging here rather than the throwing, based on that prayer bead selection. Uh, I had Lady Rivers, right? Uh, I can double check for you if you'd like. That sounds correct. Yeah, so boss. Alright, the last one was Headwind for Noor. So, in both cases, both players have two more offensive characters and one more defensive character. In this case, Noor went with a power casting Headwind. So, here we go. Barker first. He goes down. Gareth teleporting to the orb, avoids banishment. I can't quite make it into the fire here. And win with those big power casts. It's an unblockable throw there from Lady River, but it's a little bit short. Nor gives up to Gareth. Can't quite make it past that last defender there. Lady River. Stunning claim. Stuns everybody, except for Barker as he comes back in from banishment, so he zooms in for 20. Send up the power cast, Pedwin. Golder smashes the, the uh, attacker there. Barker makes it in for another 20. He has spare beat, so he'll be back. Nice power cast there from Pedwin. There is the stunning claim. Barker. Come in to defend. Barker makes it in. Gareth takes out the attacker, gets the orb, then gets banished. Here's the stunning claim. We I mean, know enough time to get Gareth back. Gareth vanishes and gets banished, so just headwind here. He banishes most of the opposing team and makes it into the pyre for 20 damage plunge. No prayer beads for uh, Headwind, so that means Anor now down one character here. Gareth teleports the orb, but he goes down. That means just Gilman. He uses Stunning Claim. Gives some more time to get Gareth back. He has returned. But Barker makes it in nonetheless. That does mean that potentially could be just one score to do the trick. And there it is. GG. The ceremony is complete. All right, let's head on back. Until the stars align. And chat, of course, let us know if there's anything you want to see for this next one. The counterclaim. 
Yeah, didn't we have one where it was a claim straight into another claim? I think it was Irota first and then Nora immediately after that. Yeah, you can do that. One of the counters for the stunning claim cheese. Well, <laughs> it's not really a cheese because it, you can use it strategically. You can force your opponent to proc uh, so that you cannot get a free score and stuff like that. So there's more to it than that, but. So anything else we'd like for this next one? Or we'd like to have these two take whatever they want to take. Uh, let me play one more match and then someone else can jump in. I can okay. also stay, but uh, that's your us. Okay, so heads up in chat. Around, I guess. Yeah, if anybody wants to swap in, Iroder says he could swap out after this one. If there's anyone in chat who is interested and available, let us know. We'll get you in soon. However, not seeing anything from chat at the moment, so I think why don't we go straight into this one? Nora says, yeah, maybe two or three more for her as well, then she's looking to swap out. Okay. So yeah, chat, let that be known. Our players, players will be looking to swap out in a little bit. Okay, so we're at the Nest of Triesta. Okay, Rotor is going with a quick throwing forfeit. And Nora's going with full Fred. Exile. Now Raji, try Rotor. Now, saying earlier how it seemed like we didn't typically see an orb going with worms, although we have used a lot of them today. Of course, some of that has been at the specific direction of the bots randomly choosing her exiles. But even on this occasion, when it's all up to her, she is choosing to do so. And now a similar pick. What I wrote her took in the first spot, this time a Nor going with a quick throwing Bertrude. And I believe went all the way down for the Crone Salute, which will allow her to, at one point in this match, turn all of our Rotor's characters into defenseless Howlers for more or less an automatic score. I'll have to keep an eye out for that, see when she chooses to use it. When almost enough time there for Colford to get a throw off, but not quite before he gets banished. There is Forfrit. Remember, she has that quick unblockable throw, and there it is 25 damage. Fred. He goes down. Forfrit just avoids banishment, but not for long. It's Delu's here. He goes in for 15 damage plunge. Full Fred. Goes down, but gives it up to Pertrude. Her quick throw gets intercepted. Looks like it must have been going short there, or at least was low enough that it was theoretically interceptable. Ooh, stunning claim here. Bertrude's quick throw was uh, off target there, it seems. Forfrit. Opportunity here for a rotor, although numbing gust means can't throw it, but does choose to plunge, even if it means losing her for the next series. Forfrit. Can't make it in this time. Gilman. Over to Bertrude. She's looking to jump in, but she's blocked. Now banished. Gilman down as well. That means only Volford back to defend for Anor, but does so successfully. Now he's moving in. Gives it up. Gilman. Now Bertrude. Her throw is short. Just barely. Volford down. 
Gilman brings Volfred back. Gilman versus his captain, Deluge. Gertrude. Pops in. He gets banished. Just Gilman back to defend. Now he does just enough. Gilman fighting some time. Gets Bertrude back. Bertrude's throw is wide. Deluge. His throw vanishes, but the throw is short. Gilman waits for Bertrude. Bertrude trying to avoid the defender, but cannot do so. Gilman wants more. Bertrude. She's down. Wolfred sets up the sapling. Raji goes down here, but that does set up a dangerous portal, and I wrote her immediately sends someone through it. Bertrude hops over the defender and into the pyre for 30 damage. No prayer beats for her, though, so she's out for this series. That puts an order at disadvantage here. And is out of defenders at the moment. But it means Numbing Gust is active, so our Rotor cannot use any abilities here, including throws. But as soon as he comes back, can do so. And that triggers the rekindling there. So Nora's still on 10 Pyre Life. But it means the next score for our Rotor would likely do the trick. Oh, um, that looks okay. <laughs> uh, let's take a second here. <laughs> let's just reset that. It's like, I think I'm fine now. Okay. Are you fine now? Yeah, Nora, are you okay? like both people are just sort of drifting off. Yeah, why don't I uninvite you, reinvite you, just in case. That sounds like a good idea. That sounds like a good idea. Let's get you over here. Who did? Reinvited. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the the reason for that weird little blip might have been. That was a remote play uh, bug of some sort or what have you. Seems fine now, though. Okay. So, Anora's good to go. I wrote her, you're good to go as well? Yes. Okay, so I'll do a countdown. Three, two, one, go. And on go, I'll, I'll hit the resume button. All right. Three, two, one, go. Gilman. Back to Bertrude. Bertrude down. Just full friend. Oh, and a quick throw here. And that's all it takes. I order finishes the job. The withdrawn prevail. They overwhelm their adversaries utterly. Thus end this night's proceedings. All right, let's head on back. Until the next right. All right, and I think I wrote her was saying could potentially swap out here if there's anyone in chat who is interested. I think Anor was saying maybe one or two more rights. Nasa going can. Good to see you. So let us know, chat, if anyone is interested in hopping in here. Otherwise, I think they both said they'd be willing and able to stick around. I am awake. Well done. Well done. And of course, if we are still having I wrote her and Anora in for this one, then let us know if there's anything you want to see between those two. I generally think Crone Fast might be one of the most dangerous compositions. I mean, they and have potential into speed. Well. Yeah, they have a surprising Definitely. amount of speed. Like... And then the cars that they definitely don't need to be competitive, but they still do have it. Mm hmm.
Uh, controller problem from well. For uh, I haven't checked with Chewing Dragon if that's what you're referring to. I don't know if he's here today, but uh, I have I've not double checked with him to see if he can resolve uh the Good the issue we had with him. It confront us today. What fine? Yeah, Please. no problems today though. Not seen anyone saying that they're looking to jump in here, so I think acting on the assumption that we'll have I wrote her plus an orb for at least one more right, is there anything we'd like to see between those two? Uh, yes, uh, put me in for the accusers for that last one. Oh, as long what? As I'm still here. What? Me? Question mark? I did it once or twice before. Unprecedented. <laughs> but you're definitely primarily withdrawn player. I did one liberation right list to accuse us. I don't know really? against whom I did that. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Norris is alright. Well, in that case, make her the tempers. Okay, what is happening here? I don't know if I've ever seen a Nor take someone other than the Nightwings. Okay, if you say so. There you go. That's in my head here. Spiracies. Something is up. Something's not right. But I don't know quite what this is all about just yet. Alright, not seeing any specific requests from chat, I don't think. Oh, hold on. Will the scribes throw that on? Anything else? Looks like that's it. So why don't we get started here? And I think, at least in Iroder's case, he was saying this would probably be his last one. That was uh, perhaps. But is that the like the the, the one you played was the last one? I can play, continue to play. Okay. But at some point, I would prefer if someone else was. Gotcha. Who shall conduct the rites? It's the Isle of Kalimer. It's a quick throwing Almer. Now I'm curious to see what with these two both choosing different teams than what they would normally take. If that is because they're expecting to do a different setup than usual. You're way overhanking this. I'm just like. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just, ah, I felt like doing something different this time. <laughs> maybe, but maybe not. And we've seen the Noor start to use that Bright Wisp quite a bit now. Talisman that, uh, for a while, I think I was the only person who was ever using it. Now, Lendo with the Power Cast, the Gold's Bracer. Now, in order, all left side, the harp. 
and therefore has the harp salute to change places with one of her teammates. Then Titan to Tizo for our rotor. And this is looking like the character that Nora will be looking to switch places with Amatha using a super leeching Ignarius. It's Rookie first to Pamatha. Pamatha does the switch, but our rotor gets. Or, <laughs> our rotor gets Spanish. Ignarius gets Spanish, and Almer throws it in for 20. Oh, the throw there sneaks through for 20 damage. Rookie. He goes down, but the Bright Wisp means he automatically passes it to Ignarius here. He goes down, or actually, Pamtha switches places, and therefore, she takes it for him. Ignarius looking to knock back those defenders, does so. Lunges for 30 and leeches for 15 here. And in doing so, Anor retakes the lead. Pamtha switches. Back to Pamatha. She goes down. That means currently defenseless. Maruki has returned. But not quickly enough to stop this throw from Almer. So that means now that Iroder has retaken the lead. Maruki. To Ignarius. Pamatha, Ignarius down. And Pamatha was looking to switch places with him. But he is gone. Maruki speeds away. Examine it back, although gives up to Pamatha. Amethyst retreats, switches with Ignarius. Ignarius gets blocked. Still has the orb here. Goes down. Ruki goes down to another big power cast from Lendl. Nor using those imps as a wall. Then switches with Ruki. Ignarius by himself here. Waits for the cast. Goes down to the second one though. Amethyst. Versus Tizo. Tizo. A little bit of a head start here, but he goes down. Keep it out for that portal, though, for our rotor. Shoulder smash there. Gets rid of Ruki. Amethyst switches places. Ignarius makes it in for 30 damage, plunge, and 15 leech. Of course, those are big scores there. And combine that with 20 damage from Ruki. And Anor with some big momentum here. One more score could be all she needs. Pamatha. Ignarius. Back to Pamatha. Back to Ignarius. Ignarius blocked. But he's still over there. Although he's stunned, actually. Ignarius. The, the rare defensive harp salute. Oh, and now it's Ignarius setting up Brazen Manor. I think Anor might have been intending to do that with Pamatha for the switch rather than the setting up additional damage because, of course, she doesn't need that here. Amatha gets a little bit of stamina back, retreats. Waiting for Ignarius to return, he of course has low hope, so he does not come back very quickly. He has returned now, though. Has the orb here. Side steps the cast. Trying to knock back Lendl, does so this time. Oh, but gets Titan Tooth here. So opportunity for our rudder, who does have someone close to Anor's pyre, although does still get banished. Back with Ignarius for Anor. Wall of Imps. Let's him venture forward a little more safely. Still keep an eye out for those casts from Lendl. Narius down, and right as Nor was looking to do the switch. No one to switch with, that means. Amatha, out of stamina here. Gets it back just in time to avoid Lendl. Oh, and was looking to do the switch. But didn't pull it off there. It's a little strange. It looked like Narius was back. There's the Titan Tooth, stunning the defender. Give me a murder some time. Throw this one in. Pamatha not back quickly enough to stop it. And that's 25 damage, not the 15. So Redder did increase the damage on that in. And follows up with a quick throw here as well. So now it's I Rotor with some momentum. Palmer. His throw intercepted this time. Over to Ignarius. Now Ruki. Back to Ignarius. Back to Ruki. He's blocked in Titan Tooth. Oh, and look at this. 
I've already had someone close to an Aura's Fire. And without back with the Orb here, undefended, switches over to Rookie. And he plunges for the win. GG. The right is done. All right. Let's head on back. I just need something exploding here. Until the next right. Without that, you had a severe disadvantage. All right, well, chat, let us know if anyone wants to hop in here. So I think both players have said they're willing to swap out at this point. Otherwise, let us know if there's anything you want to see uh, with another matchup between these two. I, I didn't... I didn't ask anything. Just said that I need an exploding character against demons. Let's blow my imps in front of our fire. It did seem like there was consistently a wall up sort of in the... on the northern sort of third for the Norris fire. Alright, well, like I said, chat, let us know if there's anything you want to see here, or if any of you want to hop in. Otherwise, we may continue this heresy of I wrote her plane as the accusers and ignore plane as the tempers. Anora's like, hmm, I don't know about this. Someone bribing those imps, or someone just have a, a nice large stock of fish they are thrown out onto the arena in front of Anora's pyre. I want to shovel with that as uh, talking around this with a stoping store. <laughs> All right, well, not seeing any requests here. Not seeing anyone looking to jump in, in which case, why don't we carry on with these two? And have them take whatever they want to take. The We're at the Book of Rights here. It's so another small arena. Shall conduct the rites. And we've seen a lot of Titan Tube today. That pattern will continue. Definitely will continue in this case. Both players lean off of the Titan Tooth character. Now I wrote her. I'm like he's going back to his speedy Viz Paleth. And 
And Nanor going back to her nutrition sick Fulfred. And I remember saying last time how we could use some more exploding characters, and well, here's one of them. An exploding deluge. with a prayer beads T so I think that may be more of an offensive hit than we typically see. There's the double Titan Tooth for you. Both players stunned here. Well placed sapling from Anor. Tiso, like I said, I think we're gonna see him go a little bit more offensively than usual. So don't necessarily expect to see him hanging out by the pyre, but it's Bullfred here first with a quick throw for seven damage. Another double Titan Tooth. Anor. Sets down that sapling on top of the fire. Or on top of the orb, I should say. Tizo vanishes some, but also goes down here. Everyone down on the north side momentarily. Grouping down back to defend against Vizpaleth. He has Titan Tooth, that will stun Vizpaleth. Oh, and Anor, I think, was looking to hop in there and banish Vizpaleth. They lost some characters in the process. Oh, and that was an. Anor getting Titan Tooth. Same thing here, but that is not Anor's Titan Tooth character, so Anor the only one son in that occasion, and gives Iroder some time to plunge here for 25. There's a stunning claim stopping Anor's play there with Ruki. Now he goes down, but here comes Tizo. Tizo blocked. Iroder with Vizpaleth. And then knock back the defender, but gets Titan Tooth. This time, Nor able to follow up with the stun, or rather with the banishment. Right, Rotor. Let me see if he can score while well, he has that Seize Chance active, but goes down here. Rookie. He goes down. Is Paleth. Blocked. And lands on top of that sapling. So she goes down. So, oh, look at that! Portal right next to the pyre. Didn't even see it. Ruki. This is the double Titan Tooth. Though the orb happens to fall back into Ruki's paws there. Passes it over to Tizo. And Fulfred, back to Tizo. Back to Fulfred, back to Tizo. Now Ruki. Sidesteps the cast. Hops over one defender and into the pyre here. Clever play there. No prayer beats for him. Remember, he had Titan Tooth, so he's gone for this series. That means numbers advantage here, or at least potentially numbers advantage for Iroder. And that is a relatively dangerous portal. Is Bleth going through it, getting rid of one defender, and make it into the pyre for 30 damage. Here's once more the double Titan Tooth. Orb falling on a north side of the arena. Going the first one to take it back. Tizo. Wolfred. Wolfred back to Tizo. Tizo goes under one defender. Gets banished, but sets up a very dangerous portal. As I wrote her on the attack here, that throw is unblockable, and it does make it in for 15 damage. That drops Nord down to 30 Pyrolite, of course, I do believe has 10 rekindling with Wolfred, but it means that if I wrote her is able to score with Fizz Paleth, may be able to trigger that rekindling with one score here, otherwise it'll take two. Ruki sidesteps Viz Paleth and into the pyre here for 20 damage plunge. Viz Paleth avoids the sapling, but can't avoid banishment after that. Tizo goes down. Again, very dangerous portal spot, and before Nor can get that sapling down, I run her send someone through that portal. Nor trying to set up a dangerous portal of her own, but loses the last of her characters in the process. Viz Paleth. Blocked. Still in it here. Causes some havoc. Vanishing one defender has the orb now and makes it in. Does trigger that rekindling. 
some serious persistence there for my rotor, and it pays off. And Rookie speeds in for 20 damage here. So one score for our rotor, of course, would likely do the trick, whereas a Nor likely needs at least two, potentially even three. And that is a Nor son with Titan Tooth, giving our rotor a little bit of time here and forcing his way in there with the Titan Tooth character. But an Or escapes what was a very dangerous situation there, but look at that portal for Irotor. Means he can send someone through right next to an Or's Pyre. An Or trying to bide some time. But Rookie is permanently gone in this series. Wolfred will be the first one to come back here. Now he has returned. Looking to block against Irotor, but he leaves frogs into the pyre. The scribes themselves surely have taken note. GG. The ceremony is complete. All right, let's head on back. Until the stars align. All right, so chat, let us know if anyone wants to hop in here. If not, let us know if there's anything you want to see between Anor and Iroder. Yeah, Nora says she can swap out her stain. I think I wrote her was saying the same thing earlier. Mm, yes. Uh, like we, at least one person would be great because if we both jump out at some point, then. And then we can sort of stagger things so we can theoretically get one of you back in and not have to worry about a will. Well, then we're if, if we both leave, then we have you. And if you have one other person, at least the games can keep going. Yeah, that's what you're saying. I could definitely swap in if, if either of you feel like you, you must stop. But I uh, have yet to oh, no, see anyone else in chat express interest today. Though, of course, we do see some familiar faces, so let us know if anyone is interested. says maybe just one more for her and then she'll swap out okay so yeah i can definitely swap in if needed arumi says feeling a little too tired today okay no worries arumi no worries in which case i think why don't we keep on going with these two and then if no one else wants to swap out for or swap in to replace an or after this one, then I can jump in. So no request for this one. So you are welcome to take whatever you'd like to take. Raji first for I wrote her. And for Nords and all left side, Pamitha. So that does mean she'll have the harp salute to switch places with her closest ally. Keep an eye out for that. Also keep an eye out for this. Meta Demon Vizpalef, a little bit different than the setup that we've seen ever take in the past. When uh, previously we saw Tailwind Press for a speedy Vizpalef. This time, though, she'll be able to vanish with the throws. Then, speedy Jodariel. Oh, 
make that speedy Ignarius in the case of an ore. And finally, a Nutrition Stick Palmus in the case of Irotor. And final one for Noor will be... Oh, hold on. <laughs> nutrition Stick, Full Fred. All right, here we go. There is the switch. Noor swapping Amitha with Ignarius here, who is close to the fire and does make it in for a 30 damage plunge here. That'll, of course, make the arena smaller. Here comes Bullfred. Doesn't have time to charge up the throw, though, and Ignarius is gone for this series. Did not have prayer beads. And remember, this Bleth there does have banishment on the throws. But Celestial Spike, and so she banishes one defender and then follows up the throw for 30 damage on the score. Here's Ignarius, but he goes down. Amitha switches places with Bullfred now. He places the sapling. Amitha down. Bullfred shields off the defender. Places the sapling. Replaces the sapling. Now has a friend. Narius. Bullfred. Amitha. Bullfred retreats. Amitha moves in. Switches with Ignarius now. Knocks back one defender. Gets the orb back. But he goes down. Does Bullfred back to defend at the moment. He'll take that hit and place the sapling on top of the orb there. Saving Anor from what might have otherwise been a score for my rotor on an undefended pyre. My rotor clean on, or at least willing to, send people straight to that portal and explode and take out any of Anor's remaining characters. But Anor has some people back here. Bullfred. This time, has enough opportunity to throw this one in for a quick 14 damage throw. That is enough to make Arena a little bit smaller still. Ignarius. Tamitha. Tamitha switching with Ignarius. Ignarius knocks back one defender. Makes it in for 30 damage plunge here. Sapling placed here on top of the orb. Lenore a little bit of time and space to work with. That may be within throwing range for her. At least with Fulfred. Charges it up. Goes for it, but it is intercepted. It's Beleth. Knocks back both defenders here. Plenty of time for the throw. And Ignarius, back with the orb here. Nearly makes it into the pyre, but he gets banished. That's full Fred, switching in. Sapling, banishes one. Amitha gets the orb back. Gives it back to full Fred. And from that range, he can throw it. For 25 damage, dropping Irotor down to precisely one pyre life. Now, does, of course, have Palmas, and therefore, I believe, does have the full 50 rekindling. That is usually what he opts to do. Any score, of course, at this point from Nor would trigger that rekindling. This Beleth. It's blocked. Banishes one defender. Then gets banished. Iggy. Bullfred. Bullfred. Oh, look at that. Little switcheroo. Just needs a quick throw. It's all he needs to trigger this rekindling here, as we were saying, and that is, uh, 50 life back, as we anticipated for my rotor. That is the full rekindling. Darius knocks back the defenders. Punching for 30 here. Wolfred down, but does give it back to Tamitha. Comes visible F. Tamitha on the move. Gets the stamina back. She's blocked, though. Now banished. Although, actually, Wolfred switches in there. Places the sapling. Time to throw. Needs 20. And gets it. Well played. 
That's it, you all right, let's head on back. Until the next bright. All right, so I think at least one person is swapping out here. Double check as to who it was, because I think both people were considering it. Okay, it was Anor. So I can jump in to fill in Anor's spot. If there is anyone else who is interested in hopping in, I think Iroda was also volunteering to swap out, but, uh, why don't I barely start setting myself up here and let us know if anyone else is interested. Morning. No, I will not be the tempers. I will be the Fire Hearts, of course. Also, will not be on controller, though. Let me actually plug. Or will not be on mouse keyboard. Let me plug in my controller, though. There we are. Okay, I will not be a CPU either. Just verify. Yep, I'm player two. Good stuff. So yeah, chat, let us know if anyone wants to swap in here, or if not, then if there's anything you'd like to see between iRotor and myself. Silver Shadow, thanks for the follow. Hope you're enjoying the stream. How's it going? Okay, well, at least at the moment, not seeing any specific requests here. So I think we get things going. Near the water. The accusers Okay, so Paul Solium, not the boat. The Welcome. Who shall conduct the rites? Alright, I wrote her. Start off with a defensive character here. With that imp. I think what I'll do here is I'm gonna go with uh, one of my usual setups, but mix it up just a bit. Actually, I think this was originally the way that I used to set it up, and then started giving Pamitha prayer beads instead. Demon. Okay, let's see. So you've got this Paleth up there. But I think I'll go with... Oh, no. What? Pretty sure my cursor was down here. How, how did that end up on... Uh, Icky? Not sure, but, uh... Gareth is who I meant to take. Alright, and then lastly, we'll take Tito. And there we have it. Oh, well passed. Not sure I like that portal. <laughs> Not sure I like that portal. Oh, I started flying. I thought I would have avoided that. Apparently not. Gareth takes the hit like a pro. 
Not that it's not a prayer beads pamatha, unfortunately, like I said. Put Time Tooth on her instead, so uh, that's that kind of hurts. Yep. Gareth, take the hit. <laughs> Will I get anyone back in time? I don't think so. Does mean I get Pamitha back, though. Oh, he's not quick enough. Right? He's not quick enough. No, no, I, I don't. No. No portal for you. Oh, okay. Well, that's a terrible portal. That's a terrible portal spot. Let's, let's rush you down. I cannot move from this spot. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. No prayer beats, Pam. It is. It is a little blasphemous. You're not wrong. But you know. I thought I'd join in on that Titan Teeth action, right? Um. I thought I had. To oh, there's there's Pam. <laughs> I was trying to send her through the portal. When uh, it was off screen. And uh, well, it, it did not work so well. Where did she go? I can't find her. One moment, please. Oh. Uh, that's not really what I want here. Not really sure what happened there. <laughs> I, uh, I think I had control of about zero of my exiles on that occasion. Suddenly they all just went through that portal and got banished. Like, okay. <laughs> Apparently that's a thing now. <laughs> there we go. That's more like it. That is far out of range. Again, no, no prayer beads, so that's, uh, that one does hurt. Not a really, uh, sustainable strategy, that occasion. No! Don't do it! <laughs> oh! That's, uh, definitely not where I wanted to land. Ugh, don't do that! <laughs> Just don't do that. Think I have the orb? Do I- I don't have the orb. Confirmed, I do not have the orb. Sure. I guess. Oh, uh, well, somebody's got to get it. Yeah, just, see, the problem is, Tiso's kind of important defensively. Because uh, now now I have to defend with Gareth. I don't really want... Oh, well, I mean, GG. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I did have a flying Pamitha there. So I think the game was like, for a second, it's like, do we, do we stun this one? Or do we just give the score? <laughs> it's like this brief stutter. But GG. The right is ended. All right. Well, let's head on back. Until the stars align. And let us know, chat, if there's anything you want to see for the next one. think which clips will work that's the one from earlier that we were talking about with the titan tooth 
Shall we pull it up? Let's give it a look. Let's see. What shot? Anor is behind. So, hold on. Let's pause it for a second. So, let's just talk about... So, what we're looking at here is that uh, Anor was saying that there might be a way to basically still be able to pass the orb even after being stunned by Titan Tooth. Is that right? Is that the idea? Aren't we looking for... I thought you were saying it was a crone that got stunned from Titan Tooth that, and yet was still able to pass. Is that it? That interaction is just because the crone jump takes so long until it actually collides, that you have plenty of time to switch before it collides. Huh. So is it just because, like, the the sort of, like, cooldown time this from the is jump? It's just too long. It's so long? You, just, you press it once, and then this long arc of a jump is there. So you can just press, jump, and then switch, and then they collide, and you have a non-stun char character. Okay. So you basically you're passing. Technically, you're passing before Anor you get stunned. Behind, will deal exactly. Okay. Than he scored. But the crone did get there stunned. There is the Titan Tooth. Mayor a little bit of extra time here, and does make it in with Tamitha. I mean, it works. Anor is but behind. there's no buff here. Will deal 10 so it's it's that right there. There is the Titan Tooth. Mayor so Anor switched. I mean, it works at the moment of the in. collision. What you do is. Tamitha. You press the pounce button, and then you're at the beginning the of the pounce, behind. then you switch, and then the pounce damage. actually so like reaches another character, and they collide, and then the crone gets done, but you're already on another character, so it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Well, there it is. That's what we were talking about before. Yeah, so I guess the, the crone is still getting stunned. It's just that, technically speaking, you've already switched from the crone to someone else. It's just the crone is, like, completing the jump like animation. The switch happens after. So maybe you can switch after, but you should also have plenty of time before. So it isn't really... It just makes it more lenient, I guess. Not quite sure. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Well, anyways, let us know, chat, if there's anything you'd like to see for this next one. Yeah, you probably did switch later. The Titan to did go off. You could still switch. May still have something to do with the pounds properties. I'm not sure. But in general, like, when you defend against, like with the pounds and something probably has gone wrong already so <laughs> you're not wrong i am not a fan of defending with the uh the crone jumps and the savage jumps i think since they have such a long charge up time and then the the jump animation is so long that's like if you miss then uh you're you're in rough shape it's a very directional jump rather than just a straight up i'm gonna jump on top of the pyre so that you don't get here. But not seen any requests from chat, so why don't we get going in that case? The accusers versus the fire hearts. Welcome. Who shall conduct the rites? Okay, so it's a web land on Raji. Exile. And... Hmm. I mean, you were saying it before, I wrote her, that perhaps the most dangerous character in the first spot is a crone. I tend not to do it, but I'm curious. Here's to try it out a bit here. Then what I'm gonna do is I 
going to go with, uh, well, a setup Teaser. that perhaps would have been something you might more expect coming from Iroder, at least before Iroder made the switch from the withdrawn over to the accusers. What do I mean by that? I mean, one crone, two imps. No, admittedly, with Gertrude rather than, uh, and Milda. That on target, it might not have been. Nah, it was not. Oof, everyone went boom. Go. Forbidden knowledge for the next one? Okay, gotcha. Ooh. Slow cooldown. Oh, and I forgot that throw is gonna vanish. Right. It's true. Where does this take me? Uh, apparently over there now. <laughs> Ooh. My team does take some time to get back from banishment, I'm afraid. To each his own. My problem is, offensively, I'm relying pretty darn heavily on Burford here. Uh, where is your portal? Oh, it's over there. <laughs> That's where your portal is. <laughs> like, I don't see it right now. <laughs> That's probably not a good thing. Not speedy enough, I'm afraid. That's not good either. Oh, that was still close enough to hit me? I did not think it was. enough. I hesitated to just sprint it straight through. Ooh. Hello. <laughs> my, my. That was not my web plan for one. Take the hit. Hopefully get someone back in time. It's not gonna happen though. Yeah, it is, uh, it's definitely tough when you do not have anyone who comes back particularly quickly from banishment. Ooh, uh, hold on. <laughs> Maybe not the best idea <laughs> to move my only defender over there. Whoops. Hello. Is that gonna make it? It's not going to make it, is it? Oh, hello. And once again, we have seen this happen. GG. What's up, Core? How's it going? Must be crying tears of shame. Hi, right. By the way, did you ever show off the Wamsalut Hang Core? Until I don't want to steal your thunder. Core <laughs> has a secret. You said Worm Salute? I mean, strategy. Before you told me about it, like I don't know, speculated about it, but never tested it. Okay, so. interesting. The Very interesting. You were the one with the bomb salute stuff. I'm pretty sure. The interaction. 
Worms will into action? Definitely wasn't me. Do you remember? I use worms a lot, but I do not use the worm salute, I think. I feel like it, it could have been core. You dragged me into one like extremely laggy test match for that. If you <laughs> that was core? Core seems to agree. Did you ever show it off on right night? Because I at least want to mention it before the next tournament so we can ban it. That's why I'm not. Is it that strong? No, no, no the, like the bombs would exploit, not the four steps thing. Like, I would call it an exploit at that point. Yeah, exactly. Worm salute with prayer beads, huh? I do you want to show it off, Cole? Very mysterious. Got me intrigued. I mean, if you're available, Core, we'd be happy to get you in. I can swap out. I mean, it's not it. very fun to play against, but, like... Yeah, if you're up for it, Core. I've been playing for a while. Hi, Rotor, if you want to swap out. Eventually, you have you go in for a Rotor. Uh, Either one of us. Then, like, I need to, like, take a break anyway, so... I'll hop out, and then we can wait for Core to come in. All right. No worries. Horse says he needs a minute, but it'll take me a minute Thanks to the game. set him up anyways. Thanks for stopping by, Rudder. Happy to have you as always. Let's see. Or and of course this does mean this does mean that we have two Pyrehearts players facing off against each other. So one of us must switch it up. So who's it gonna be? I think in the past when we faced each other, I've typically switched over to true nightwings. So I could do that if you'd like. Unless there's something in particular that you'd like to switch over to, Core. Let's see. How can I send you the invite while we're at it? Oh, you may not be on this our uh, on scene yet. I'm saying you need a minute anyway, so no worries. Hmm. And of course, chat, let us know if there's anything in particular you'd like to see between Core and myself. Although, that being said, it does sound like I wrote her and Core talking about this very mysterious, devious worm salute setup that they apparently were saying might need to be banned for the next tournament, which would suggest that this thing must be pretty darn powerful. But I have no idea what they're referring to. So I am intrigued. I am certainly intrigued. Yeah, I'll switch. I'll uh, I'll switch over to the True Nightwings, and we can put Core on Firehearts. There we go. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the stunning claim, the Worm Sloop is something that. Previously, we saw very little. Uh, you know, for a good while there, it seemed like it was something that just went completely untouched. But now it's certainly started to become much more popular these days. It seems as though, perhaps with all that time in which people were not using it, we also did not discover some interesting mechanics with it. Like, you know, I'm not sure we knew that you could use the stunning claim and stun everyone, and if you had someone who was banished at the time coming back from banishment, then they could become the only non-stunned person, and then you could just come zooming in for an uncontested score. That was something that at the very least we saw almost never. There's a chance that people just didn't even realize that was a thing before. But uh, it sounds like this is something different. Yeah, so core, it would be you versus me here, so I can put you in at the Pyro Arts and I can go True Nightwings if that works for you. Yeah, he had the, uh, had a Pyro Arts sigil underneath an Accuser sigil. I forgot to turn off the Accuser's one. Good now, though. 
All right, let me see. Four is now going up on the steams. Mm. Not seeing him oh, unless he's straight out here. No, not yet. Uh, yeah, Steam at least at the moment seems to think that you are currently offline. Fairbeard's stunning claim. I don't know. Maybe I wrote or can confirm or deny. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. The prayer bead salute thing just wins you the game. Oh, okay. Now I think I can think I can piece together what it would be. I think I can piece together what it would be. Tor's like, yeah, what am I supposed to show exactly? <laughs> what am I signing up for again? Let's see, I'll try to send you an invite here, Core, but Steam seems to still think you're offline. In theory, said invite has been sent. Okay, you're still offline, no worries. Yeah, so I think I can start to piece together what it is that I wrote her and Core are talking about. Because remember, the idea or the idea of the thing that we were starting to talk about earlier was that stunning claim, the worm salute, stuns everyone who is currently on the playing field. However, if someone is banished and comes back from banishment during that duration in which everyone is stunned. They are the only person who is not stunned. So they can go zoom in, pick up the orb, and potentially even make it all the way to the pyre to score. So, remember, that sure it's one thing if you're coming back from banishment, so you could have it work that way, but when you have prayer beads after scoring, you don't come back instantaneously. There is a short delay. So I think I know what these two are alluding to here. Yeah, I think, you know, if it certainly was not banned in previous tournaments, I, I think it was just hasn't really been on our radar. Can't really say that I've seen anyone do it consistently to the point where it has felt necessary to take corrective action for tournaments. Like I said, I mean, until recently, Stunning Claim has just, for the most part, gone untaken. And only until recently have we actually seen people start to use it and uncover some of these mechanics that maybe had we used it more regularly, we would have found more quickly. And it may be that people who have special Stunning Claim strats just uh, have not gotten the chance to show them. Because it's still relatively new most of us. So I think we have Core in here now. Okay. Great, great. So Core, I've got you on player one here. I'll, so you'll be Pyre Hearts, I'll be True Nightwings. 
and I have not seen any requests here from chat, and given how it seems as though Four is looking to do a specific combo, it may be best if we just let us take whatever we want to take here so that we can make it happen. So let's go for it. It's the Blade of Lee, which is, of course, a small arena, which I feel like may benefit from this strat. Actually, it might be the best strategy against it. Really? I mean, there's also those walls that can slow you down. Yeah, yeah. That might make it kind of hard to weave around in a short period of time, which I think you're going to have to do what you're trying to do. So, huh. Hmm. Well, well, well. I am going to do this. I am going to do this. Let's just say I'm gonna go for it too. doesn't really work with it. Not yet, at least. Ooh, get out of there! <laughs> nope. Afraid not. like this. Don't like this. <laughs> okay, so here it comes. Alright, I, I kind of just set myself up for it that time, actually. <laughs> I did it to myself. <laughs> that was me that did the stunning claim. It's like, maybe if I do it before him, it'll work. Too slow with it? I might have been too slow with it. I deliberately kind of hesitated a little bit because I thought I wanted to maximize the duration of the prayer beads. Or rather, uh, maximize the time in which it was going to work. But, uh, no? I guess not. Oh, and that's the wrong person to salute with. So, yeah, the way you counter this, you actually have a setup where you can actually counter this. Um, you do your own stunning calm because you can actually stunning claim. Sorry, stunning claim through it. Oh, I missed. One moment, please. Oh, don't no, be sorry. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
Gertrude has a turn. Thank you. Uh oh, that's not good. I didn't get you with that. I thought I would have. Twas but a little splash. It's extremely deceptive. <laughs> That's I suppose one way to look at it. Not quick enough. It's not quick enough, I'm afraid. Can you cast through those barriers? That's not good. Uh, one moment, please. Oh, it's Bertrand this time. See that coming. Oh, that missed? Okay. <laughs> and it worked. And it worked. Oh, I had the orb. This is wet. Did I, how, when did I get that? <laughs> And then there's this. Not much force of wind. So yeah, the weird thing is, after stunning claim, I didn't realize this, but it seems like I'm stunned for a while. But then, once I regain control, I have control of my character that I currently had on. But then I'm not allowed to switch characters. So like, I, I can control Bertrude and salute with her, but I can't switch over to one of my worms and counter with a stunning claim. So strange. Um, I believe you can. I was trying to then, but I couldn't do it. It was weird. I thought you could. I'm pretty sure you can. Tri I know you can stun and claim while being stun and claimed, but I thought you could switch. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, like, at least two or three times there, I tried to switch over. Every time you saw me saluting with Bertrude after your stun and claim, I had pressed the switch character button first and then tried to salute, but ended up saluting with Bertrude because I was not able to switch. That was weird. I know we've had some bugs for player two when it comes to salutes, so I don't know if like, there's an on zero chance that it's tied to that, but it may just be that it's part of stunning claim for some reason. Oh, that's true. You could also go prone and just go, I mean, you could go with other band setups and just go triple crone with salute and feral cursor way to victory but uh yeah there's a reason why that one's banned that one was i think more obvious that that was a, a broken setup yeah so I, f I found that when i was testing the false step so okay I okay when i found that so how so I remind me how that combines with false step then um, so basically, you just jump to your death, and then during the respawn animation for Fall Step, you stunning claim. You pass it back right before you die, and then you you uh, um, you stunning claim, and then you pass it back, and then they're all stunned while while you're like very close to their fire. Okay. Like halfway down the field, you know. So this would not be combined with your bottled void setup. This would be like a. I mean, I I have put it with my bottled void setup, but I think usually. You could do Bright Wisp, but that makes it more that, reliable. That's what I, based on your description, that's what I thought you were saying is in this case you Yeah, I have Wisp. done Bright Wisp. Okay. I have done Bottle Void with it to just, you know, do more. Because um, you only really need False Step with it. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And I've, I've showed it off in Right Night. I've done it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Well, chat, let us know if there's anything else you want to see here. As, as you can tell... Core has been uh, scheming up a lot of devious maneuvers. So a lot of things that we thought were uh, either didn't really have a lot of use or uh, seemed like they were just memes, Core has found a way to, to make them useful. Usually playing meta builds is pretty boring to me <laughs> in most in most games. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing the same thing all the time, then that can get a little stale. So I like mixing it up every once in a while with something crazy. And, uh, well, you found some, some crazy setups indeed. 
All right, but not seeing any requests from chat. So why don't we hop back in here? And we will see if Core chooses to unveil one of those other ones. The fire arts it's the book. Shall now face the true night wings. Welcome. Who shall conduct the rites? It's a speedy stat up. Interesting. Well. Well. I'd like to do here. I think. I'm gonna go. Messenger Imp? I'm gonna go. Just. Figure out how this one works. this. I'd even be able to go down to star sign. Tell you the truth. What? Messenger yeah, I continue to try to use some core strats against him. Of course, he's the expert when it comes to this stuff, but he's come up with some interesting setups. So then, I'm gonna go Sinadra, and I'm gonna give her Sacred Bond, and with her, I wanna go Rolls Bracer, something else that would be better. If I go Typhoon Ball just play it kinda safe in case when trying to meme, things go wrong. Definitely feels possible. Vanishing froze. I right, then do I like triple down on the memeage and go. What is it? This, this, and this. This is this is gonna go so horribly, horribly wrong. <laughs> but we're trying it. We're trying it. We got a lot of memes happening here. A whole lot of memes. That included. That included. <laughs> Uh, Sandra, please. Oh, how dare you accept that. Don't make me bring him back. Oh, um, uh-oh. That's not good. Please don't do that. <laughs> A little carried away. <laughs> A little carried away banishing everyone other than the person who had the ore. <laughs> I mean, the messenger I learned it from you. <laughs> well, I think this was more uh, Nor's strategy and uh, Nor or uh, Iroder's strategy. Well, now I don't have him, so that's a that's a bit of a problem. He's kind of a fundamental piece. That's like maybe and even that doesn't really work when I I kind of need Snadra. Not technically jumping. Quickly. Oh, no. Back to Sandra. Back to Sandra. Quickly. Back to Sandra. Pull the last minute shoulder smash. Nope. That's no good. 
Alright, this is why we took Typhoon Bottle. Because things were gonna go wrong. Is that technically no, technically not part of the jump, I suppose. That was also not good. Alright, we got Messenger Imp back. That's important. Good, good. Very good. <laughs> and then it's like, wait, I don't want to banish him. All right, yeah, uh, that's, uh... that's the strategy. Just don't touch the teaser. <laughs> oh, that banishes, right? Run away. <laughs> Only remembered at the last second there. Merely a collapsing blow. The fire heart fire now burns relatively brighter. Oh, hopped over me. A mere attack. Up into it! Oh. Go ahead, shoulder smash him. Oh no, I wasn't fast enough! Oh, I still ran into that. <laughs> but he came back just in time. Oh, uh, well that's everybody. That's, that's uh, the other side of the portal. As in, not the side that I wanted to go through. Uh, oh, <laughs> I threw that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Please don't do that. <laughs> Quickly, yeah, oh, nope, not quick enough. I don't think. Oh, uh, no, no! <laughs> I didn't even realize you had Sandra over there. <laughs> oh, the memes. The memes. I, lo I love the bomb Umilda. It's so good. Their freedom after all. Thus end this night's proceedings. All right, let's head on back. Until the next right. Chat, let us know if there's anything you want to see for the next one. seen anything from chat at the moment in which case why don't we get back to it here Okay, now uh, are, we, are we continuing with the memes here? Are we going something a little more straightforward? I don't know. No. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm going to Sniper Curs next. Two Sniper Curs, you say? Two Sniper Curs? Well, I think there's only one way to respond to that in that case.
Oh, lame. <laughs> Oh, did you mean defensive snipers? Like, with their casts, or did you mean throws? I thought you meant throws. Yeah, well, no. Oh, I thought you meant throws. Okay, well, I mean... Thing is... The thing is... And, uh, well, I mean, uh, you can probably see this one coming. So, what do I want for him? Actually? Uh... This is a good question. This is a good question. Uh... Where is the, uh, seen, seen some people go with the scribe rock on the curse. I've never really tried it much myself, but, uh, go for a, a big Dalbert here. Right, he did not have prayer reads. So, uh, that was not necessarily the curse that I wanted to hop in with. Okay, this, this banishes. I, I remember this much. An interesting exchange. Oh, right! The ones that, uh... Oh, excuse me, did you have Titan Jig as well? That, that curve? You must have. That was not my Titan Jig curve. There we go. He's the uh, prayer beats one. Not start jumping quickly enough, I'm afraid. Oh. Ah, <laughs> Got hard to avoid it. That's time I just tried to jump. Did not have the salmon for it, but. Is this a double Titan Tooth here? I think it was. Oh, what? Got your aura back in time. Double Titan 2. Oh, I should not have sprinted there. I should have jumped. Use what little stamina I had. No, no, don't do that. Let's see, that was my Titan and your Titan Tooth, wasn't it? <laughs> wasn't it? This crazy slithering all over the place. Sprinter, don't sprint. <laughs> Nothing in between. Hello. GG. Most excellently done this time. I must. Ironheart's and True Nightwing's crones look great. The right. The, uh, you think the specifically the color of the ore makes them look good? I do really like the, the True Nightwing's colors, but so rarely do people use them. Until the stars Only alive. when we have times like this when two people who are usually playing the same team go up against each other, it seems. The robe colors... Oh, well, I mean... I mean, as we all know, 
the most stylish man in the downside is obviously a member of the True Nightwings, so that goes without saying. But anyways, let us know, chat, if there is uh, anything in particular that you would like to see for this next one. Whoa, whoa, slow down, I wrote her. Savages don't look great. They take a little getting used to. Well, I mean, maybe just haven't gotten used to the, the most stylish man you've ever seen. I don't know. I don't know about that. I kind of think that certainly, at least in the case of the true Nightwings, that the Savage robes are basically just a better version of the Nomad robes. Is that not the difference between Savages and Nomads? Savages just have better fashion? <gasps> Anor, how could you? How could you? <laughs> I mean, I suppose, do we ever, in the campaign, do we ever see a true Nightwings nomad? Do they ever have any? Is there such a thing as a, a canonical true Nightwings nomad? Do we ever actually see in the campaign, say, a true Nightwings nomad next to a true Nightwings savage like Aerith? All right, I'm sensing a little bit of bias coming from the sap players as well, with the whole, well, saps clearly have the best robes. <laughs> and there's the worms, of course. Don't forget about the worms. I think, uh, of all the worms, I think, I think Lady River, at least of the three worms that we have, I think Lady River has the best robes. But anyways, at least when it comes to this next right. The tempers and fates robes. I mean, we never, do we ever even see a, a nomad for the fate in the campaign? Obviously there's Almer, so there's definitely a savage. I don't know about the tempers. But like I said, I do like the tempers uh, worm robes. In the case of Lady River. But anyways, not seeing any requests for this next right. So uh, we can debate downside fashion all you like. But well, let's get going here. Yeah, Deluge is significantly bigger than the other worms. That is true. And uh, Lendl is actually bigger than the other nomads. 
like here. Go Gilman. Look at how big he is there over the right. Then switching over Galu, she's basically, yeah, twice as big. And if you look Edwin over here and compare him to how tall Lendl is, that one's maybe not quite as noticeable, but yeah, Lendl is definitely a little taller than Edwin. Now that I'm switching back and forth, though. Not as noticeable anymore. <laughs> maybe I've just psyched myself out of it. But anyways, anyways, it's time for some high fashion. It's time. You're in a lot of smack talk. Time to get down to business. Show them what real fashion is like. Meanwhile, we might see triple worm setup coming from core here. At least on pace for it. Okay, then let's go position wise. Yeah. Still Gareth here. <laughs> Most stylish man on the downside. Look at that. He just oozes style. Chastity harps are top tier. I don't know. Doxiana compared to the other harps? I'm not sure which harp I like the rogue colors of the most. But then again, I do have Pamatha on team high fashion, so what the answer is Pamatha, I should say. Obviously. Okay, so there you saw it. It's all worms. But, uh, for me, it's all fashion. It's all fashion. Alright, here we go. So fashionable. So stylish. But why male models? Oh, that still made it in. I don't want to be on this side. Please don't blow up on everybody. That that would be rude. That would that would be rude. Um, this is unfortunate. Swear these imps. Not doing me any favors right now. Also, there goes Scarif. Ceremony 
is complete. All right, so let's head on back. Now that we've settled who the most stylish exiles of the downside are. But let us know if there's anything you would like to see the next one. Raub? Oh, okay. Okay, I mean, this arena, of course, has uh, at least when Core has been here, has uh, gained a bit of a reputation for uh, for a certain something. For a certain something. <laughs> hmm. No spoilers. No, I will say no more. I will say no more. Alright, well, why don't we get started here? Because I imagine, I imagine Core has something very particular in mind for this next one. The Pyre Hearts shall take on the true Nightwings. Welcome. Let us see what exactly it is. Who shall conduct the rites? It's Orlek first, it would seem. Or maybe that's just a diversion. Or the stowaway. With bottled void. Yep. You guessed it. Alright, well. Well then. To that I say. Hold on. Yep. Now I want this to work. Oh. I definitely tied his rage. Not do that last time, but I should have. Uh, this is gonna get pretty chaotic. I can tell you that already. Okay, okay. I see. I see. And I'm gonna go Madra as well. And what do I want from her? Let's actually do that. Same idea here. And you go for a worm, which was interesting, because uh, I was thinking of doing the same thing here, specifically for this. This is going to be so unbelievably chaotic. Uh, do I add stunning claims to the equation just to make it even more crazy? I don't know. Suppose I could. Suppose that I could. Also, what would I? I don't know. Like, this might. My prayer beats? Who am I actually scoring with? I'm memeing, absolutely yes, but uh, who am I actually scoring with? Is it Gilman? It might need to be Gilman. I guess it's Gilman. Uh, the stunning claim doesn't really work for. He's my my prayer beats person. I would go R4 if you want to score. I don't know how much defending I'm really going to be doing with him. I don't know. I don't know what I want you to do, other than to just come back when everyone else gets banished, because that's going to happen a lot. Um, 
what if we do that? No, no, keep it simple. No prayer beads. Probably just overthinking it. No sudden claim. And this is basically the equivalent of infinite stamina stuff. Okay, let the chaos ensue. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> a little preoccupied with the memes there. Forgot that you were uh, moving in for the score. Yeah, well, that's actually a bit of a problem, but I plunged with him. It wasn't really supposed to happen. Okay, run. Run like heck. Run like heck. <laughs> Uh-oh. Typhoon Bottle, save me! Zadra, save me! There we go. Okay, oh, nope, that's not, oh, man, is the range on that even bigger than I expected it to be? Oh, gosh, the chaos, the absolute chaos. Remember to throw, that's important. Pat the Glory is also a good match for this one, I think. It's got a little bit of extra chaos to it. Not great, not great plunging with Tizo. Actually, probably would have preferred for him to get banished rather than uh, rather than score. <laughs> Strange as that sounds. Did you take soldiers? You did take soldiers, smash, didn't you? Oh, that works too, I suppose. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, um, also that. Also that, though. Again, a little preoccupied with the memes. <laughs> Forgetting about the important stuff like uh, preventing your opponent from scoring. Run, run, run. Go ahead, do it. I dare you. Also, um, if someone could please go through this, thank you. Uh, where's the orb? Uh, you, you still have the orb. That's not good. Oh, <laughs> your, uh, your bottom point almost messed yourself up there. <laughs> Definitely threw me off, but uh, can it actually move your own characters? It can move your own characters as well, can't it? Nope, 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 no, bad still way. Bad still way. Don't do that. I mean. <laughs> good game, good game. GG. Uh, lots of memes. Lots and lots of memes. was extinguished there, but no. Thus end this night's proceedings. Oh, I didn't even see you stuck in Vagrant Song there. I'm sorry. That's why you guys were talking about the uh, Path of Glory stuff. Until the next right. Yeah, I mean, there is some merit to it, for sure. I mean, if your opponent doesn't see it coming, then it is pretty hard to react to it on the fly. There's a lot of shock value to it. Let's get Vagrant Song going here, though. Get it for this one. But uh, let us know, chat, if there's anything else you want to see. Also, let me not move that. <laughs> no. Let's see. That is... That's fire, right? For some reason, I was thinking Bastion for a second. Okay, let's turn off the in-game music in that case. Okay, I could...
acoustic surviving exile after that. Gotcha. All right, in chat, let us know if there's anything else you'd like. We got the songs all set. Yeah, that was part of it, I remember. <laughs> At least uh, on a few occasions on that previous ride. I committed so hard to the meme that uh, I, I kind of forgot about the whole defending my pyre thing. So it's a, it's a strange balance that you're trying to strike. Not seen anything else other than those songs, though. So why don't we get going here? And we'll see what other memes we might have up our sleeves. Oh, I hear the water. It's the boat. Alright, I know what I'm doing. And actually, this is a, a fitting song for this arena, right? Okay, so what I'm going for is, uh, let's see, so with Player 2, my first exile is most of the time not actually going to be the one that I start with, right? It's mostly going to be my second one that I select, so you take a, not my designated leadoff player here, but just a, a secondary person. So, well, it's been a while. It has been a while since I last went for this, but uh, let's go. Let's go. Fire life. And then. Uh... Ignatius. Alright, so now, this is the person I'm leading off with most of the time. And, uh, well, you probably guess who the last person here is. Thing. And, uh, well, the thing is, something like that, or that, would be far more practical. But I did already use one of the rings, so I'm kind of committed at this point. Where is the other one? Alright, bring it on. Nope, that did not knock you away. That perhaps even knocked you into the fire. Now we've got a war life. Or did. Oh, oh, you took the legendary talisman, didn't you? Didn't ya? Um. <laughs> like, hold on just a second here. Alright, here we go. This is what we're here for. Uh, not quite. Not that time. This will have to do. Uh, nope. Not that time. Oh, yep. Yep, you can go through those. Oh, well done. The 180. Well done on the 180. Don't. What's that? Don't get Jody! Okay, well, maybe not. Maybe not, maybe not, Doug.
All right, Orlai. Let's do this. I mean, it's pretty obvious what I was going for there. <laughs> so, we're really going to need to be a little more discreet than that. Oh, uh, one, one moment. There we go. Oh, I did not really want that, to tell you the truth. Nor did I want that. This is the big problem. When people get banished, when everyone gets banished, I got a long time I have to wait. Get them back. There we go. Now we're taking flight. Hard or left. Bring it on. No, not quite. Almost, but not quite. Okay, I gotta be kinda careful here. Only one demon left. I am not get banished by this. Oh, I thought that was gonna be double, double banishment there. That would have been pretty, pretty bad. Get back here, Bertrude. Stop running. <laughs> I'm too slow. <laughs> That's the benching for one. No, not Orlek. No, I have to wait 30 seconds for him. Fly, Jody, fly! Oh, nope, that's not gonna work. What's with the shooting star crow moves? I know, Core seems to be making it a thing. There we go. I mean, not the distance we're looking for. But that was the idea, at least. We're looking for the full field dunks. Knock him back. It's not a dunk, but I hope you'll excuse it. And up on the jump. Now I don't have my infinite stamina anymore. Darn you, long series. Almost. Almost. All right, Jody. No, no. Give it. Not quite. Getting a few close calls. Oh. Okay, that's a banter. Cool, cool. Here we go. No. That was weird. The time in which he chose to take flight. Seems a little odd. Oh, so close! So close to the big dunk. But not quite. Unfortunately, not quite. Oh, not fast enough. Jump, Jody, jump. Okay, I am, uh... There we go. Defenses for a split second there. He is back, though. This vanishes. I was a little lucky with that one. Nope, 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 none of that. Oh, this is gonna go in, though. That goes through barriers. What? Her aura was bigger than, than Oralex? Excuse me? Oh. 
Not quite. Not quite. Don't mind me. Oh no! I need a second burst. Or like, save me. Oh no! <laughs> it's making it. Hold on. That won't do. That won't do. That won't do. That just simply won't do. Ah, uh, that's not good enough either. That's not good enough either. Oh, no, Jody! <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> this is not good. Oh! That can Alright, Jody. That's just time to shine. been a little more patient might have been enough there nope that's not good enough that's not good enough that's not good enough neither is that afraid that isn't either hold on no no oh off target that would have been decent I suppose Banish me with your throw, please. Oh no, I need the second burst. I can't get it. I just can't get the second burst today. Oh, that one was a little bit better. A little bit better. That was weird. Swift and unimpressive thrust, but true. Just casually knock my teammates away. <laughs> oh, not quite. Now to the flame. Ah, this is not good. This is not good. Iggy. Quick enough, okay, good. Bad guns. Alright, Iggy. So I'll have to do the trick. Now, that was horrendously awful. It's a little bit better? I don't know about that, though. That's just not gonna cut it, I don't think. On target, I think. Oh, that one was just sloppy. That's so good. Iggy. Oh, intercepts. Clutch plays. Is it long enough to get Jody back, though? It might be. Hold on. Runway. Air or lek. Ready for takeoff. Or, or very much not. Very much not. This one I'm not going to be able to stop. Probably. <laughs> Competition between the boat and the pit for biggest meme place. Oh, that was not the way I thought that was going to happen. Um, yeah, I mean, the boat, I think, has probably a longer-standing 
um, position as a meme location. Hit him a leaf, I think, is a more of a recent addition to that list. Oh, is that good enough? I don't know. Oh, okay. Apparently I'm over there now. Careful with Orlac. Got to be a little more careful with him. No, no, no. That might be onto something there. That might actually be the play. Hold on just a second here. Oh, well, that's not gonna work. Cool. Who are happy? Jody? Uh, too many, too many demons in the line of fire there. Uh, catastrophe. <laughs> Saw it coming, I was like, no, no, gotta move, but I wanted Orlac. I got greedy. Uh, if I could get Orlac, <laughs> please. Right, here we go. Here we go. This is it. This is the moment. This is it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Uh, no, that was okay. I take it back. That was not the moment. That was weird. Oh, okay. Well, that was probably not the play. Run. Run from the Banishee throw. Ah, come on, Orlek. So disappointed in his performance today. He does not want to jump the way I want him to jump. It's a shame, really. It seems like Air Orlek has uh, got his wing flipped. Like, where, where is the fire? Where's the passion, the energy to to enter orbit? I'm not I'm not seeing it today. It's not seeing it today. Game. The GG. Perhaps a stroke of fortune ought to be thanked. The right is complete. All right, let's head on back then. Until the stars align. Not memes, experiments. It's all in the name of science, you see. Well, so we have a new song request. Let me update that one. It was, what, Surviving Exile Acoustic, if I remember correctly? Yeah, okay. So let me switch that out. Wait for it. And let us know if there's anything else, of course, that you guys want to have for the next one. Okay, Admittedly, I thought the song was a little bit closer to the end than it actually was. Darren, stop singing. <laughs> oh, no, there's a whole other verse. Okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind. He's way farther from the ending than I thought. Okay, in that case... There we go. That's the other one.
and never to return by oh i mean that's that's serious stuff right there core <laughs> it's such a bop <laughs> all right well anything else for this one or will that be it got a song Looks like that may be all, though. So why don't we get this one started up? And I hear the imps. I'll do it if you do it. That's not what I was referring to, but I mean, I suppose I could go with that as well. going with another one of those banishing throws on the crones and that is not what I had thought we might do here what I had thought we might do here was you know the good old classic hmm our wants though we're gonna go this route Tizo. And a second crone, and that one will cast through barriers, which, especially in an arena like this, where those imps are flying over the place, could be helpful. But, uh, well, probably getting the idea what I was thinking I would be going for here. Let's have you switch over to Gare. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so it's a Thorn, not Gilman. And then last but not least... There we are. 
All right, here goes nothing. Well, that doesn't really work. Stop! <laughs> Leave me alone! <laughs> Go away! Yo! I had a nice portal set up! <laughs> That's my offensive imp, so that is convenient. Go ahead, jump at me. Darn it. <laughs> you know you wanted to. Uh, nope, there, there, well, that was not how that was supposed to happen. Hello. I do not like that you keep on changing the position of my portals right as I'm about to go through them. This is rather inconvenient. I don't appreciate it. Run! Run the limps! Ooh, okay, maybe that was not the best. But oh, look at that, though! Oops. Okay. <laughs> I was like, does that have enough range on it? I'm not sure. Oh. No boom. And that is not my web lanthorn. I didn't want that orb. I did not ask for this. That was not the plan. And that stubborn flame, after plunging with a character that does not have prayer beads, that's painful. That's just, that's just very painful. Oh, I got, oh, I got creamy. I tried to wait till the last second to fly. Oh, that backfired. Alright, at least there's no Southern Flame anymore. At least there's that. Oh! I just needed a split second! Oh, what? How, how, did, how did I get banished? And not you? Excuse me? <laughs> That's gonna be game. Oh, or not. World's best portal. Or not. Just try not to be pinned in the corner. No! <laughs> that was my chance! My opportunity! There we go, and no stubborn flame means I can actually get 25 damage out of it. I think it's active again now? Uh, no it isn't, actually. Aha! 
Aha! Are you? First time Tide Tooth has actually done anything for me this match. Uh, that, I'd love to say that was intended. Except that it wasn't. That's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt. Oh, I don't even have a portal right now. That's kind of a problem. Now's your time to shine. Raji! Good game. I'm sorry. TG. The true night wings prevail. They somehow managed to scrape by despite their adversary's efforts. The right is ended. Alright, well. Well, that is that one. Until the next we had, I think. A song request lined up for this one here. Just want to check in chat if there's anyone who is looking to jump back in here, because I've been going for a while now. But while you are thinking that one over, let me switch over the song here. Although, I, I should note, I mean... Okay, Triesta? Okay. Go Nest of Trieste here. Let's see. Ooh. Sure that this actually is the right version. Hopefully that is correct. And to clarify here, not the liberation right. Not the liberation right. Just a song request for never to return. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Anything else for this one, though? Not seeing anything. Of course, we have the arena, so why don't we get this one started? Oh, two masteries. Okay, well, we don't have it hard coded in, but I suppose we can just manually make sure we don't exceed two. Okay, well, good counter, good counter. If 
then... Uh, what do I want on you? I think... I think we'll make you Titan Tooth Harp. Possibly Snadra, but possibly not. And then, well, uh, yeah. You could probably guess this one, too. That's for what I want on you, though. I think I'm gonna make you another speedster. Alright. Here we go. It is the Harp Arena, of course. That would seem fitting. That's the Titan Tooth one, though. That's uh, not the one I want to go crashing into, I'm afraid. I got no one back to stop this right now. The accuser's pyre is the first to falter. No! <laughs> you weren't on your Titan Tooth arm. That was speedy. Yo oh, I might have pushed Gilman in. Come to think of it. <laughs> I was going to say, how did he get in there so quickly? Uh, I did sprint into him for the fire. That, that might have helped. That might have helped. Alright, if you could just, like, not defend with Pamitha, that would be... Why did I fly into her? There we go. That's what we're looking for. Oh, uh, it doesn't matter if I fell swoop. That's, uh, that's not gonna matter there. Hey, Pamitha, wanna not go this way? I do a heal. For a second, I, <laughs> I looked at Gilman. <laughs> For some reason, I looked at Gilman and thought that was the orb. I mean, I don't technically want to score with you, but that spell swoop for you. Parts of the night wings, I forgot. <laughs> That's me! Hold on. Quick one. Not the full damage that time, it didn't seem. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Bad, bad switch. Now's the time. Now, so how she come back? So oh, the um, lava makes it come back more quickly. No. Oh, bad timing. That's a lot of harps lined up. Which way am 
I gonna go? Huh? Where am I gonna go? Huh? Not that way. <laughs> no. Doesn't have prayer beads. He's not in for this series, which is unfortunate. But there it is. GG. Good game. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I misspelled that. No! <laughs> I misspelled that too! <laughs> no! <laughs> I caved under the pressure. I couldn't do it. I heard the song ending. I was like, no, too good of an opportunity to pass. <laughs> All right, let's head on back. Until the next right. Okay, well. I've been going for a little while here. So if anyone wants to hop in, to replace me, let me know. Otherwise, I would say... We might be approaching right about the time when we'd be looking to... I mean, not quite do Liberation Right, but uh, our penultimate right, in which we'll have our last round in which we'll take requests. But if someone else wants to hop in, then I'd say, you know, of course, we'll give them the chance to play matches. This core and I have been going for a little while here. But if no one is interested in hopping in, then I would say in that case, give us whatever else you wanted to see tonight. Because this will be the last right in which we will take requests before going into our liberation right, in which of course we have us taken our best possible teams. No request for that one. <laughs> All right. More worms themes. Anything else? Will that be all? At least at the moment, that's all I'm seeing. In which case, sure. All right, we'll leave it at that. Just the song. Let's see where we end up here. It's the Glade Blue. I feel like we've been here a zillion times today. Welcome. Who shall conduct the rites? Ooh, an all right side guildman. With the Titan dude. Okay. Okay. Well, I take that and I raise you one guildman of my own. Sir. And I raise you one Lady River of my own. Exile. And I raise you one deluge 
of my own. Uh, nope, not that one. That one. Yeah, this is gonna be pretty painful with, um, uh, Stubborn Flame. If I do take the lead, then I will be dealing five damage at best with any score. So, uh, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt a lot. Okay, did you get you? Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, well, that's the side tooth one. It's uh, kind of unfortunate. A rather cunning trick. Best not let this go to your head. Uh, that's also type two. And that's unblockable. And also type two. We can rock <laughs> roots more like. No! Not quite. Oh, hop over that. How dare you! How dare you! Wall. Not doing me much favor. Right. Huzzah! Also, that portal is extremely dangerous. This is the problem. <laughs> if I'm in the lead, at best I'm dealing five damage, which is uh, not exactly, not exactly an easy way to deal enough damage to take out someone's fire. Excuse me. Thank you. Uh oh. <laughs> this is not good. Five pyro life at a time. Is that gonna make it? It will. Oh, with the voice only new. I'm afraid not. Yes, you do have the legendary talisman, don't you? Yes, you do have the legendary talisman, don't you? <laughs> no! That's not good. But I think Stubborn Flame is no longer active, so there's that. Uh, if you could... There we go. Actually give it to you. That'd be great. Thank you. Um... No, not the Titan Tooth! <laughs> oh, nope, 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 put up quite an effort. The ceremony no! <laughs> is complete. 
And also no in response to those people. And by people, I mean bots. Until the stars align. All right, so, so, I was thinking, I was thinking, we might be approaching liberation right time. You guys are down for it, and we might go into that. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. One moment for a ban those people. I mean, then again, like, never going to show up again. Bots that get infinitely created, it seems. No, I do not want to gift them a sub. Alright, whatever. We'll ignore them. I take it back. Just ignore them. <laughs> they won't be back. Okay, so, like I said, I think it's just about time for the liberation right. In which case, that of course means we'll be heading over to the Fall of Solium. We will be turning off the in-game music here because we will not take any requests for this next one we'll be going with just our preferred ideal team setups for our final rites of the night and of course we'll have our our thematic music as well we uh got a little bit of a sneak peek of some of it but uh in fact just do some uh this Some of that. Loop this guy. And then we should be good to go here. Sermon intro, of course, must be on. So again, no request for this one. This will be our final right of the night, our liberation right. And uh well. Without further ado, let's get going. Alright, so, we will have us taking whatever teams we would like to take, entirely up to you here. Or going with what seems to be a Titan Tooth Gilman in the first spot here. As for me, all I'm going to say is we've had... A lot of comments about fashion in the downside today. Some of which were right out. Right out. And so, today we're gonna prove something. Or going with a quick throwing stowaway, it seems, in the second spot. And for me in the second spot, well, guess what? Most stylish man in the downside, of course, also happens to be a quick throwing savage. Red sighting? Go look for the maximum rekindling as well. Add more rekindling on top of that. 70 rekindling, so a lot of pyro life here for core. 
And the last spot for me is, of course, the last member of Team High Fashion. None other than Tiso himself. And with that, that will begin our liberation right. Myself representing the True Nightwings, not often I'm saying that, and uh, Kor, the Pirate Hearts. Right, you will definitely catch that. Okay, uh, you know, would prefer to throw, but we can plunge. We can plunge. That's okay, it's not against the rules. There we go. Okay, he went down. Just uh, move Gareth over here, please. One moment, one moment. Well, uh, uh, Gareth, Gareth, if you could just like, there we go. Get out, get out of the way of the cast. Preferably, Gareth. It's <laughs> okay, well now I just sacrificed both of them. <laughs> it worked for a second there. <laughs> it actually worked surprisingly well. Oh, well done. Oh, you got me. Oh, and you, the orb was over there. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did that happen? Oh, uh, nope, 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 oh, uh, nope. <laughs> Oops. Oh, well done, recovery. Still over there. Well, remember though, Core of course has that humongous second life bar. Oh, I still think. When did I get that? There we go. Cherry picking with Gareth. Oh, I really shouldn't be doing that with the Titan 2. Waiting for that instead. Well done. Good block. Oh, still got that. <laughs> that's side tooth as well. Leave Gareth out of this. Let's <laughs> try to make it in with him. No, don't do that. <laughs> I had a nice portal positioned. I wanted to use it. I was looking forward to it. Oh, that's not gonna do. There we go. And there is the huge rekindling, like we were saying, 70 for core. Dinormous. To do with my character. There we are. Okay. Back to business here. Uh, 
Alright, that's gonna get game right there. GG. Good game. Oh, play. Well, with that, that was, of course, our final right of the night, our liberation right. So thank you, everybody, who participated directly in the right today, and those who gave us the request in chat. Until the next I am now going to duck out of Discord, because, of course, that was, that was our last one, which does mean we're going to lose to Rikva here. But I will turn back on the, uh, the in-game music here real quick. Turn this back on real quick. But, but, thank you all for watching the stream tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. These were, of course, our, uh, this is our Pyre Community Right Night stream, which we are doing on Sundays. And uh, if you are interested in getting more involved in this multiplayer Pyre action, of course, the best way to do so is by joining the Right Club Discord server, which you can do by clicking on that link right there. I did not, I just hit the commence right button. That is not what I was supposed to do. Oh dear. Uh, one moment, well, as soon as this right actually begins at the Fall of Solium, I instead uh, go back to, the main, back to the main menu button. Anyways, <laughs> like I was saying, uh, so right nights, Sundays, if you're interested in uh, getting more involved, click on that link right there to join the Right Club Discord server. My name is Lids, I'm hosting these right nights, but other than that, I'm also streaming uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition on Fridays, Mass Effect 3 Multiplayer on Saturdays, of course, Fright Night on Sundays, and then uh, we recently finished our Witcher 3 playthrough as well. Then on YouTube, Lidsvid's there as well, posting VODs from all of those streams, including The Witcher, and uh, also doing some Gwent videos, The Witcher-themed card game, and Thronebreaker, which is the Gwent campaign, and then occasionally even sneaking in uh, a Bastion video here or there, or uh, I'd like to... Or like, I would like to finally actually finish Hades, which uh, we have not played for like several months, but in theory we're a few runs away from finishing, so uh, that may be on the agenda in the not future as well. But uh, the best place actually to stay up to date on all things lids is by joining my own Discord server, which you can do by clicking on that link right there. Uh, you can also, uh, if you haven't done so already, hit the uh, follow button to get a notification when I go live. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Lidsvids there. Uh, at Lidsvids, I will post live. <laughs> Words, English. At Lidsvids on Twitter, I will post there when I go live as well. There we go. <laughs> but uh, that's going to be it for me for tonight. So thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the stream. And I will catch you next time.